Good afternoon. I'd like to greet the delegation of the state of Colombia and the representatives of the elect big team uh, open the public hearing case 13141, Luis Alfonso Hoyos regarding Colombia. You have the option to choose the interpretation. You can click on the globe in the lower part of the window of Zoom. I will now give the floor to the Assistant Executive Secretary, Jorge Mesa, so that he can introduce the case. Thank you, Madam President. This case is related to elect responsibility of the state for the elect violation of the human rights of Mr. Luis Alfonso Hoyos Aristizabal as a result of the sanctioning process uh, to remove him from office carried out in 2001, which make it impossible for him to apply for future positions. On August 2019, the Commission notified the parties of application of Article 36.3 of Rules of Procedure, given that petition is including the criteria established in Resolution 116, and the decision on admissibility was deferred until debate and decision on the merits. The purpose of this hearing is to listen to the uh, statements of the alleged victim, given the arguments of admissibility and merits of the parties, and receive information on the current status of the case. I inform the parties that they have the option of English to Spanish interpretation by clicking on the globe icon at the bottom of the Zoom window. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. First of all, the Commission will listen to the uh, elect victim, Luis Alfonso Hoyos. The elect victim will declare on the facts of the case, in particular, the process that led to his removal from office and the consequences. The petitioner will have up to 10 minutes to carry out the interrogation. Afterwards, the state will be able to question the witness for 10 minutes. Finally, the commission will ask questions to elect victim. Please state your full name, place of birth, and place of residence. First of all, thank you to the commission to listening to me. I am Luis Alfonso Yosalistip Sabal. I am from Pennsylvania, Caldas. I live in Pennsylvania, I was born in Bogota, and now I live in Florida, USA. I will now give the floor to the petitioners to carry out the interrogation for 10 minutes. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet all the commissioners and members of the Secretariat, members of the illustrious representation of the state. I will start with the interrogation. Mr. Luis Alfonso, please state who you've been and make a brief presentation of your work for the community. Thank you. I am Luis Alfonso Hoyos Aristizaba, the victim in this case. For 20 years, my political debt was declared for eternity with the provision of uh, lifetime political rights. 45 years ago, I was the founder in Pennsylvania in the municipality you see behind me in the mountains of Colombia of a political independent movement called Actitud Renovadora. That movement was born with the first popular election of mayors in Colombia. That political movement worked on two lines. The personal change as a base of uh, the change for society and change in the municipalities to start a transformation of the state from its foundation, looking for each municipality to have a development plan with participation of the citizenship with quality management in order to provide social services. At the beginning of the 90s, my municipality was recognized by the World Bank and, and the Inter-American Bank as one of as an example of decentralization in Latin America, we were recognized because of the expansion of education programs, health programs, social um, services, and citizenship participation. I was chosen as the president of the council of my uh, town. I was also chosen by my region as member of the uh, lower chamber of um, Congress. And up to 98, I was chosen a senator of Colombia. So far, the youngest senator in the history of Colombia. I would like to point out that while being senator, I was recognized by my colleagues 
with the honor of highest distinction provided by the Congress because of my work during those four years. During that period, the Commission for Human Rights was created in the Senate. I was the first vice president and I fostered with human rights organizations the first and the second debate of law 288 in 1996 that allowed in Colombia the application of recommendation of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights and the International Pact of, on Human Rights of the UN. Afterwards, I was manager of four public entities in which we were able to achieve quality certificates. For seven years, I ran the presidential agency for social attention, and that was the first public entity in Colombia to be certified internationally because of its quality, environmental quality, safety, and information quality. I was the director of the SENA, the highest, the, it's an institution tripartite with the state workers and businessmen that trains 8 million workers. I also fostered quality processes and I had the opportunity uh, to represent um, Colombia as an ambassador before the OAS, the first embassy to be recognized because of its quality. And we were pioneers as we have presented all processes electronically for the first time in Latin America. Would you please tell the commission which were the facts that led to the investigations against you? 27 years ago, when I was a senator, I gave permission to an official working in my team who worked for seven, for, during my four years as senators to work remotely from uh, abroad. And when I was candidate uh, for governor of Caldas, they said that it seemed I had uh, taken the uh, salary of this official for four months. They said I had kept uh, her salary, which was $250 per month when I was a candidate. Could you tell the Honorable Commission the facts because of which the state uh, declared you were guilty in the process before the state council, it was proved that the official worked for four months and she received a thousand dollar directly. But this council in the sentence defined that as I had not requested any permission to the Senate, the four months that had been paid to her were um, an illegal use of public um, funds, and that led to the remove from office. They decided to remove me from office and that I could no longer be a public uh, official. Could you tell the commission whether you were a senator when these investigations uh, were started? No, those events had uh, occurred five years before I was a candidate um, to become governor with independent uh, party. When the campaign appeared, that accusation, which had occurred five years before and three years after I had stopped being a senator. Could you tell the commission whether you had the opportunity to address the second stage? No, because that did not exist. That was established only four years uh, ago in Colombia. I presented uh, a remedy before the courts, but I also use extraordinary remedies. One to be reviewed before the state council, before the same councils that denied it. And also I appealed the sentence which was not uh, accepted. 
it was also heard by the constitutional court they did not accept that article 2036 uh, was aligned with the uh, rules of, of the constitution of colombia would you tell the constitution if you were criminally investigated if so please tell the results of such criminal investigation. This is the most important topic. I want to tell the commission that when this council established that I had to be removed from office, they sent the investigation to the criminal chamber of the Supreme Court of Colombia, which investigated me for three years. They heard and saw all the evidence and dismiss this process and said that Luis Alfonso is not guilty. There is no crime. And the alleged crime that was described in the final sentence did not exist. The Congress certified that did not have happened. In spite of that, my political death was established. Please tell the Honorable Commission whether the sentence has caused any conse negative consequences to you. Yes, I lost as governor by 13,000 votes. I was leading all polls, but I, was, I wasn't allowed to run for office, not even to my uh, city. I cannot represent my community the political project of my independent party was not able to progress, which was so necessary for the context of Colombia. They have affected my rights and those of my community. Thank you. Do you have any final comments that you would like to present to the Honorable Commission? Yes, I would like to thank the Commission for such an important opportunity. This is very clear. It has been referred to this in previous sentences that allow the current president of Colombia to act. The convention has to be applied fully in the state. Colombia has already accepted to, uh, accepted to change and implement the second in instance, but Article 23.2 has not been implemented. I hope that the Commission can determine recommendations so that the state can comply with the Convention so that I can exercise my political rights, represent my community, and run for office. Thank you to the Commission. Thank you. Mr. Hoyos, I will now give the floor to the representatives of the state. Thank you, Madam President. Greetings to all the members of the Commission, representatives of the petitioner, and Mr. Luis Alfonso Hoyos. Good afternoon. I will now ask a few questions. Has of all, Mr. Hoyos, in your reply on to the first questions, you mentioned several positions, public positions that you uh, occupied. Which ones were occupied after the sentence was issued? Yes, when I was removed from office, uh, my political death has been determined and I cannot run for office to lead this political movement. As I have been appointed, I was able to occupy different positions. I was recognized as one of the youngest manager when I was very young and this uh, decision does not affect um, the fact that I can be part of any private institution, but I cannot run for office for any public official. I cannot run for mayor, I cannot run for governor. Thank you. In order to 
provide further information, I would like you to clarify whether the positions you occupied as the director of social action of the SENA, the National Service of Education and ambassador of Colombia before the OES, was that after the events you mentioned, that is to say the decision to remove you from office, I cannot be elected for any position, never, even though I was given an absolution, I was exonerated. Okay, thank you. Second, my second question has to do with the uh, charges, why the uh, process uh, was initiated. In uh, answering one of the questions you were asked, you said that the charge was due to the fact that you had kept the salary of one of your officials. Was that the only charge why the report was filed in your removal process? That was the accusation. We were on our political campaign in 2000. I was leading our campaign that was threatening the traditional um, movement. We were winning the polls. And then I was reported suggesting, because they said, it seems that uh, the former senator kept a thousand dollars from one of his officials. And that was all. And that is why on the during the proceeding, they showed that um, they showed that that was not the case. It was proved. The ruling said that uh, uh, there was, they said that uh, there that wasn't a charge that they had presented, so much so that on the criminal proceedings, I was able to defend and the Supreme Court verified that, uh, that I did not need to request permission to do that. They were applying an, an they were applying a charge to me by analogy, but I was not subject to those rules. They said that uh, it was the undue use of public funds, and that uh, meant that I had to be removed. But the those uh, that the lack the, the removal, the fact that one can one can be removed, is to punish people who are corrupt, not to. Um, beat political the, the political opposition, but I was able to refute that at the Supreme Court during the criminal proceedings. They said I was right because they said that there was no crime in my uh, behavior. It was I, I worked in due diligence, and that is why the Supreme Court on the criminal proceeding said that I was not guilty. That I had acted with due diligence. Thank you. Along that same line, you are um, you are questioning the decisioning, the final ruling. So my question is, the arguments in your questioning and what you're presenting here at the um, Inter-American Commission, did you present those arguments on the domestic remedies that you filed uh, in Colombia? Yes, as I was saying, I first presented a remedy of appeal. The only uh, sort of remedy I was able to present was the one I did. And in spite of that, we all know what happened. Nevertheless, I did also use extraordinary remedies. At the same tribunal that judged me, there was no new evidence with the same documents and they stuck to their decision. And then the extraordinary um, remedy was filed at the Supreme Court. That's what I did. And then I defended myself in the criminal proceeding. And it was very clear that took three years. I presented my arguments and the Supreme Court in an unanimous verdict said that I had done nothing wrong, that there had been no wrongdoing, no crime, that I had uh, followed the law because I didn't need permission 
to act because the um, rules apply to other kinds of uh, officials, but not to me. Article 23 of the Inter-American Commission says that no one in this continent under the convention can lose their political rights unless they are criminally convicted by a competent judge. That's why um, I hope some, uh, the, 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 sorry, the, the current president said two years ago that when he got to the government, he would fight this because he said it was ridiculous for persons who were corrupt to continue to be able to uh, run for election and not innocent. Uh, it was very clear. The arguments of the commission and the arguments of former, pres of, of former Senator Petro were very clear. Okay, uh, please, uh, if it's okay, I would appreciate it if you could uh, answer in uh, shorter terms for uh, timing issues. Another question is that uh, you mentioned that you proposed uh, the you argued the incompatibility of Article 23 with the proceeding of removal at the Constitutional Court. Could you say that one of your arguments um, that the Constitutional Court analyzed in its ruling in 2008 had to do with Article 23? Unfortunately, during for many years, several courts in Colombia refused to acknowledge the um, full uh, enforcement of the convention. They actually said that uh, I had that they that I had actually done something wrong. But when four years ago the new law was enacted modifying the removal process, the reasons the government presented were was that they had to comply with the Inter-American Convention. So even though some courts had stated that Colombian regulations did not crash with the uh, Inter-American Convention, they start modifying their norms. And now there is a court of appeals 30 years later, but there is one. Now they need to comply with the other modification. That's why we are here at the commission, so that the commission will enforce the Inter-American Convention that should be fully applied in Colombia, not partially. Finally, my last question is, would you be able to tell us the uh, date in which the uh, ruling of your removal was issued and then the date of the ruling of the Supreme Court? Yes, the initial ruling was in 2001 on August 8th. And after that ruling, they sent it to, to the Supreme Court for their investigation. Three years later, the Supreme Court issued its ruling. The commission has it, we attached it to our uh, report to the commission. The um, court's decision is very clear and unanimous, as I said. You will see it on the ruling because there was no crime nor wrongdoing. But what's most important is that they analyze the uh, wrongdoing that had, uh, meant, had been mentioned and they said that there was no wrongdoing. Thank you, sir. As I said, let's try to be brief. Now we will uh, start with the participation of the commission. Each commissioner will be able to ask their questions and you will have to answer after each of the questions. First, I would like to ask Commissioner Rallon if he has any questions. Yes, Madam President, I have questions. The first one is if you are aware that when the facts occurred, as much as you know, were other people subjected to the same proceeding of removal? And do you believe there was a common motivation um, shared with your case? Thank you for your question. Not only back then, but in the past 30 years, there were many proceedings of removal, but the only time when there was a national reaction for that removal was my case. It was so heinous that 
I, 1,000 people gathered to pay homage to me, and all five presidential candidates took part in it in 2002. The five main candidates were there. The Cardinal of Colombia was there. A former judge of the Inter-American Court was one of the speakers, and he said that it was outrageous because an innocent man was being punished. So it is great to uh, remove from office those who are corrupt. But in my case, the reaction was so clear that all five presidential candidates from all the parties were there at that ceremony. I received solidarity messages from around the country, and I am proud of that. But the truth is that I am continue to be punished 21 years later, and I cannot run for elections, even though I was criminally exonerated. It's absurd. The only institution that can give me back the rights I was robbed of is the uh, Inter-American Commission. Thank you very much. One final question. And please, let's try to keep it short so we, my uh, colleagues can speak, can speak as well. Should the uh, Commission identify human rights violations in this case? In which way would you feel um, compensated? Well, as I said in my lawsuit, I think that the uh, state of Colombia should follow the convention because it is okay for Colombia to uh, take the political rights of those who are corrupt, but not to those who have been exonerated because it is a punishment meant for those who are corrupt. And secondly, it is fundamental for me and my movement for me to be able to run for office once again in Colombia because they have taken my rights for no reason. They are violating my rights and those of my community. So the main compensation would be my, the possibility for me to be a candidate so that me and my community can recover our uh, rights. So for the entire society, the state should follow the convention. Thank you, Madam President. I will remind the witness to uh, try to uh, answer in, spe in a specific manner. Um, Commissioner McCulloch, do you have any questions? Yes, indeed, Madam President, thank you. And good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for participating and being as clear as you could possibly in this um, 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 hearing of your case. Um, my first question is to the witness, um, ex-senator. And it is this, I'm, I, I put it at once, I'm a common law lawyer, not a civil law lawyer. Um, but in, in your case, I understand that you, the allegation that you went before the um, Council of State to answer to was that you had received the salary for this assistant uh, who worked in your office for four months, but that the Council of State did not find you culpable for that, but changed the allegation to you did not have, you did not seek or have permission for her to work abroad. Is that, is, is my understanding correct? Eso es correcto. Por eso yes, no... that is correct. That is why it doesn't make sense. They no, 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 accused no, no, no. me for something I wasn't able to defend myself. I am Sorry. a lawyer, so <laughs> even though a common law one. Um, so my next question is for the state. Do you consider that kind of... Perdón, comisionada, la parte de la... Oh, I'm sorry, all, all, all commissioner. Only questions to him at this stage, yes. No, no, no te preocupes. Okay. I would ask... No worries. Then, now you can comment. Do you consider that that kind of proceeding was according to strict law of Colombia at the time? That you can change Creo. the allegation? That they could?
Por supuesto que no. Of course not. It was, uh, it was outrageous. That is why uh, that led to a national reaction. The fact that all five presidential candidates and all the political forces reacted in such manner was because it was an arbitrary decision. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I don't want to trespass on time, and you've already said that before. Uh, um, do, do, was there in existence any law, rule, regulation, policy that a senator could not permit a staff member to, con to go abroad and perform their duties whilst abroad? Was there anything in place at that time? No, ninguna. No, none at all. Senators could manage their team as they wished. Each senator had 10 staff members who worked with them in other regions. They didn't have an office. There was an article 385 and 388 of a specific law in Colombia. One was about Congress officials. Those needed to grant permission, needed permission, but the others didn't. So what the uh, state council did was that they created a rule per analogy, which is not allowed. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Now I will give the floor to Commissioner Arosemena. Yes, I have a specific question and I'm looking for a specific answer. Why? What was the criminal category presented by the State Council for your uh, investigation? I undue allocation of public funds because they said I didn't ask for permission for those four months that they paid the officials. So that was the undue allocation of public funds they got, that got to the court. And the court said, there's no wrongdoing here because that permission is for Congress officials, not for staffers. It's very clear. That is why the court said that there was no wrongdoing. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Hernandez, do you have any questions? No, 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 it's not necessary. Thank you. Commissioner Clark, do you have any questions? Thank you very much, uh, President, and good afternoon, everyone. This is a rather extraordinary tale, uh, Mr. Alfonso Hoyos. Um, I have two questions. One is maybe just a background question, and please forgive my ignorance. Can you tell me how is the Council of State constituted? And then secondly, do you consider having regard to the, the events that have happened and also to your criminal exoneration? Do you think that there were extrajudicial considerations on the part of the Council of State for this extra, extraordinary um, revo revocation of your political rights? Yes, I have no doubts about that. That is why I really appreciated the solidarity of all the political forces, because that doesn't usually happen in Colombia. And in 32, 31 years since the um, um, removal has been in, uh, enforced, there was only one case that led to this kind of reaction from all the political forces, because it was very arbitrary. I would just like to say that, as I mentioned, even a former judge of the Inter-American Court was there and delegates from all political forces manifesting because it was an arbitrary decision. They didn't want me to win the governorship. They wanted me out of the political space in Colombia. Do you have more questions, Commissioner Clark? I, if no yes, more? my question, uh, just uh, how is the Council of State constituted? 
who comprises this Council of State? El Consejo de Estado es el tribunal this Council is the highest body of the administrative um, sector. The State Council is the highest organ when it comes to administrative cases and situations related to the state. Thank you. We will now listen to the arguments. The petitioner has 15 minutes, then the state will have 15 minutes, then the petitioner will have five more minutes, and the state five more minutes as well, and then the commission will ask questions to both parties. Thank you, Madam President. I will focus on three main aspects. First of all, general considerations on the case. Secondly, considerations on the serious human rights violations and find in the human rights conventions against um, Mr. Oyos. Finally, conclusions and requests. Admissibility. It is important to point out that as we have seen in this questioning, it is clear that Luis Alfonso Hoyos did not have the necessary or effective remedy as in Colombia for processes of the removal of uh, office, the possibility of an appeal was not possible. Mr. Oyo exhausted the all the, the available resources and these remedies were inefficient and were not enough. The thesis is the configuration of the fourth instance and in that regard we request the commission to reject this preliminary section as the state forgets that the representation will pretend for the Honorable Commission to review this ruling as taking into account in domestic facts. In that regard, I would like to point out that what we are discussing now are the serious human rights violations caused to Mr. Oyos, there are two moments in which those violations occurred. The allegations, we do not pretend the commission to review the ruling of the council, but for the commission to review the violations suffered by Mr. Oyos. First of all, the judicial proceedings in the state councils in which there were violations to due process, such as the um, possibility to appeal a ruling to a higher uh, instance. As we have heard, the second moment in which human rights were violated, and we are asking the commission to review that, is that the ruling is violating his political rights enshrined in Article 23 of the Convention. Also, his judicial protection was violated, violated the right to personal integrity and right to equality. For those reasons, we request the Commission to consider this ruling to be to declare inadmissible and allow the merits report. In connection with human rights violations to Mr. Oyo, we will develop two points. First of all, right 
to appeal a ruling before a higher judge or court. Secondly, the right to exercise political rights. Regarding the first one, for this representation, it is very important to highlight that the arguments related to the other rights out of time that time reasons we cannot do that here so we are going to focus on developing the right to appeal the ruling in that regard it's very important to highlight the scope of the organs of the in inter-american system in particular the inter-american court the court has established the following respecting judicial guarantee in joint article 8 are not limited to criminal uh, proceedings but administrative proceedings as well as these are also expressions of the punitive um, power of the state however the state council in its ruling of 2001 rejected the remedy that Luis Alfonso had filed in order to correct violations to due process. The declaration was of dismissal was based on the following arguments by the council. The guarantees enshrined on the norm are related to rulings related to the crime being aware of the norm on which the appeal remedy is based, we should highlight that it cannot be applied because removal from office is not a punishment. The domestic law determines the trial to remove an official from office making it impossible to file such remedy. Colombian law does not establish a remedy to appeal a ruling that determines the removal from office, only extraordinary remedies. The state council understood that the right to appeal a ruling was only for criminal proceedings and I then have one conclusion. The Colombian state had the international duty to respect all judicial guarantees enshrined in Article 8 of the Convention as the process against Mr. Hoyos was punitive. The consequence of the process determined his political death. However, although this international duty existed, the state did not comply with it. The Inter-American Court has pointed out specifically the right to appeal a ruling, and it has highlighted that to appeal a ruling is a key guarantee that has to be respected within the framework of due process to allow an adversarial sentence to be heard by a different a judge or a higher court. In the case Petro against Colombia, this honorable commission determined the international responsibility of the Colombian state because the mayor of Bogota had been removed from office through the disciplinary process that did not allow him the possibility to uh, for the case to be heard to a different uh, court. That's why the commission determined that the remedies enshrined in Article 8 H of the Convention were not being complied with. So appeal ruling is a fundamental part of the right to defense of a person so that an unjust, unfair ruling is um, decided Violating these rights thus produces an illegal and the responsibility, international responsibility of the state. However, the, the state has pointed out that law, 
1994 established the possibility in an extraordinary way for present the decision to remove office before the council only in cases of violation of due process. This argument by the state leaves aside, unfortunately, the jurisprudence of the Inter-American Court that has determined that in order to fulfill the warranty enshrined in Article 8.28 of the Convention, ordinary remedies should be applied, not extraordinary. Then regarding appealing a ruling should be done through ordinary remedies so that it is possible to analyze legal issues on which the appeal ruling is based. There is an interdependence between the facts and law so that the wrong interpretation of events implies the wrongful application of law. Thus, there should be a broad control of the facts that are being appealed in the final ruling. The state arguments forget the process of removal of office. Mr. Oyos was subject to shows that this was a process that did not enable the Mr. Oyos to present an appeal. And if appealed, then it had to be heard by the same counsel that had heard the case in the first instance in order to support its argument that there was no violation to this warranty, the state pointed out that Mr. Oyos had the opportunity to contest the ruling. Thus, the state says it has no international responsibility. We request the commissioners to reject the arguments of the state as they are not respecting the jurisprudence of the Inter-American Court and this commission, and they are, they are hindering the possibility of Mr. Reyes enjoying his fundamental rights. Regarding the violation of his political rights and trying to in Article 23, we point out the attention to the attention of the commission three parameters that can be applied to this case. First of all, political rights and judicial guarantees that protect him cannot be suspended under no consideration. Political rights are made up by the right to active and passive elections. So both of them are essential elements that are part of the core of the enjoyment of political rights. Thirdly, restriction of political rights are taxative and cannot be understood only by the elements and only can only be restrictive to the elements described in article 23.3 of the convention uh, taking into account the interrogation of the documents that have been presented mr oyo's right to passive elections has been violated that is to say his right to be elected. For more than 20 years, Luis Alfonso was not able to run for no public position due to this con uh, ruling by the council. The restriction that has been imposed, which is illegal and illegitimate and unconventional as is that not comply to with the requirement of Article 22.3 of the Convention, determining that this restriction should be carried out through a ruling in a criminal proceeding. It is determined that the State Council doesn't have the 
capacity to hear criminal proceedings. The authority that is competent, that is to say the criminal judge that may determine this restriction according to the American Convention, decided on favor of Mr. Hoyos, as there is no uh, evidence to continue with this investigation. The Supreme Court of Justice has heard the same facts, reviewed the same evidence, and the evidence of the file of the State Council and decided that there was no criminal crime, that there was no crime. Thus, it decided unanimously to conclude the uh, investigation in favor of Mr. Hoyos. It is very important for this representation to quote several aspects of this sentence of the Supreme Court of Justice with the aim of showing how the State Council was used politically. The Supreme Court says before this elect event, it is impossible for the court to determine the criminal type that has been described that the senator took a third party's salary that was part of the assets of the estate. The funds used for the payment of the official during the five months she was abroad were legally justified. That is to say, she provided a service. Thus, sorry to the petitioner, you have run out of time. If you want to continue, then we can then reduce that time from the remaining one. I continue. The Supreme Court of Justice says, the public faith was not altered by Mr. Hoyos in order to guarantee the uh, services provided by the official, thus the salary was paid. The second factor that makes this situation even more serious is that disciplinary proceeding against Mr. Alfonso by the State Council, apart from not being competent to hear this case or to make that decision, that is a serious violation of human rights. So there are serious violations in detriment of Mr. Hoyos. Thus, this representation regrets the defense the state has carried out in order to support the removal from office. This has delayed Mr. Alfonso's access to justice. I would like to remind the honorable delegation of the state respectfully that Mr. Hoyos has been for more than 20 years waiting for justice. Um, you have used more time and now we should give the floor to the state. You can use two more minutes. Please go ahead. Thank you. Commissioners, petitioners, and other persons present here today. It is an honor to be before you as director and representative of the state and the general director of the National Agency of Legal Defense of the State of Colombia, Dr. Lucia Zamora, um, asked me to give, make this presentation on her behalf. She has been recently elected. Bajo la dirección de la doctora Zamora, la delegación de Colombia en esta audiencia reafirma el compromiso del Estado colombiano con el respeto y garantía de los derechos humanos. The state with the respect towards human rights and confirms before you this is a, a fundamental axis of this government. We will present the legal arguments regarding 
this case in order to prove the commission that the state has respected the conventional guarantees that of Mr. Hoyos. I will now give the floor to my colleagues, Lorenzo Hernandez, and Mr. Sarmiento, who will present the arguments of the state regarding three aspects, admissibility, some general considerations on the removal from office in Colombia, and the lack of a responsibility of the state for the violation of the rights that the petitioners have described. Comenzaré por las cuestiones de admisibilidad del asunto. Lo haré destacando que este aspecto es fundamental porque todas las cuestiones que la parte peticionaria alega ante la comisión. This is a fundamental aspect because uh, everything was uh, agreed upon with the by the constitutional uh, constitutional court. That is why uh, this is why we are reaching this fourth instance to prove that you must consider that the pretensions of the petitioner domestically and the ones presenting here are the same. Also, the uh, interpretation of the decisions of the Council of State and the court will allow you to see that there was an answer given to each of the arguments of the petitioner observing the standards required for the facts at the time when this occurred. So there were three claims uh, against the decision of the state, uh, the, the Council of State. The first remedy, then the, the remedy, the extraordinary remedy, um, he answered questions that were asked to him in his questioning. Now, if you go to the uh, sentence 508, you will see that it's the same arguments presented on the previous action and on that ruling the uh, exoneration at the supreme court of justice was analyzed and if you look at the initial observations on the merits you will see they are presenting the same three arguments today at the inter-american court and actually if you read pages 9 to 42 of the observation on the merits by the petitioner you will see that these are the same arguments that were presented at the Council of State and the Constitutional Court. There are no differences there. That is why this affair is considered the fourth instance, and that is why the inadmissibility should be declared. And this occurs because of the arguments presented by the petitioner, because they focus on the reasoning and the assessment of the proof uh, of the Constitutional evidence that was that took place during the initial uh, proceedings on uh, an inadmissibility report 201 of this commission. Uh, it says that if uh, there is a standing sentence, there is no competence for the commission. And that is why I will now present some general considerations on the proceeding of removal in uh, Colombia. This is part of the Constitution, and it was uh, considered to add it to the Constitution when it, in, it comes to taxative issues. This type has case law and legal development. And the courts have pronounced themselves on the issue. This has allowed them to state its finality and how they follow the Constitution and human rights treaties. Also, Law 144 from 1994 established the law of the, the proceeding for the removal of office and stated that the um, Council of State is the only institution to do that. It also established a reviewing uh, proceeding. Also, on ruling 254 from March 29, 2012, our constitutional court stated that this proceeding uh, should not take place in only one instance. It considered that this uh, was in compliance with the constitution and um, human rights treaties. In order to do that, the court considered 
uh, ruling by the Inter-American uh, Court against Costa Rica and also the Council for Human Rights. So in few words, to reach the um, decision that there's no violation of human rights, the Constitutional Court did and take uh, go through a process of conventionality control and stated that uh, it was fully constitutional and the extraordinary remedy was as well. Now, I will give the floor to Andres Sarmiento who will talk to you about why the commission should consider that there's no international responsibility in this case. Commissioners, it is my pleasure to be here with you once again to prove that there's no uh, responsibility from the state. And I will um, talk about the arguments mentioned by the petitioner. And I will focus on those referred to during the um, presentation. Now I will start with articles 8 and 25. There are two aspects here I would like to address. First, that allegedly there was no previous communication of the accusation against Mr. Hoyos, and as a consequence, there was an alleged um, incongruence. And secondly, the fact to challenge the uh, ruling at the Supreme Court. With regards to the first aspect, the alleged violation is presented because according to the petitioner, Mr. Hoyos was reported for the undue allocation of public funds because it's certified that one of the persons who were part of his team worked while they were outside the country. And that the fact that the Council of State um, decided to uh, remove him from office was that there was no previous authorization. Commissioners, it is enough if you read the ruling of the Council of State to understand that there is a congruence between the reported fact and the uh, removal. I invite you to read page 46 of the ruling. On paragraph two, you will find that it says that Mr. Hoyos did not manage to prove that the um, official worked outside the country. And that goes against what was mentioned by the witness during the questioning, where he said that he did prove that to the Council of State. Also, on page 47, it is said that apart from uh, all of that, Mr. Hoyos, and I will quote, did not have competence to authorize Ms. Munoz to keep on working abroad also because he certified his uh, work in a um, situation of irregularity. This shows that it isn't true that there was no congress between the uh, reported fact and the reasons why he was removed from office. And this argument was analyzed by the Constitutional Court in its ruling in 2008, and the court reached the same conclusion. Actually, the Council of State, and it is important to remember this, made sure that there was a congress between in, within the process. If you go to pages 48 and 49 of this ruling, you will see that it rejected two other facts presented by uh, the um, accusation because they were not considered and that would violate the rights of, to due process and defense of Mr. Hoyos. Now, well, moving on to the right to challenge the, the ruling, it is important to consider the date in which this ruling was issued, August 8th, 2001. And this date is fundamental because the responsibility of the state should be analyzed, considering the interpretation that by then, the organs of the inter-American system had uh, done of Articles 8.2.8. Now, for 2001, the Inter-American Court had not ruled, uh, including, uh, had not ruled on the scope of that decision. The first decision was done in 2004. 
three years after the Council of State issued its ruling for Mr. Hoyos. So we cannot try to analyze this case based on rulings issued by the court years later. Also, we should consider that Mr. Hoyos did have the uh, remedies within the state. These resources were the uh, resource, the remedy to um, to review, because as my colleague, Mr. Hernandez said, he managed for all of his arguments to be reviewed. And I would like to stress that on the ruling, on the reviewing remedy presented by Mr. Hoyos, the Council of State stated that at the point of the decision, it cannot analyze the controversy without limits unless there is a question on the due process. And this is important because on his special remedy for review, he alleged a um, review on due process. Commissioners, Mr. Hoyos Aristizabal has said that there was a violation to his extraordinary remedy for review. So with that remedy, a comprehensive analysis was done on the decision issued on August 2001. And I will refer to Article 23 of the American Convention. Commissioners, the process against Mr. Hoyos did not violate this right. First, because the restriction to his political right was the result of a legal process that was done by the highest court. And considering the nature of that process, all his warranties for due process were respected in accordance to the bodies of the system once again by 2001. Also, the uh, punishment that was imposed on him does not prevent him from uh, working as a public official. We would like to stress that after 2001, as Mr. Ojo said, he was able to uh, work as a public official. For example, he was the direct, he was an ambassador of Colombia at the OAS, and he also headed the National Service for Learning. And the restriction on his political rights on the alleged uh, victim is not real, especially if we consider the um, finality of, or the objective of the uh, removal process, which is sanctioning behaviors that uh, hinder transparency. That is why, commissioners, that the proceeding of removal complied with the uh, Article 23 of the Convention. And it is, we must point out that this analysis in relation to Article 23 of the American Convention was recently done once again by the Constitutional Court of Colombia in its ruling C. 146 in 2021. On that ruling, the Constitutional Court did its conventionality control and even took into account the uh, decision of the uh, ruling of the Inter-American Court on Petro Rego versus Colombia, and it based its work on this decision and others to decide that the a uh, process of removal is constitutional and conventional. Finally, and the state would also like to clarify something important here. With regards to the um, criminal judge and the process that was taken to the Supreme Court of Justice. Number one, in the international file, you will see the ruling issued by the Supreme Court. There, you will see that the process was started because of a criminal report, not because the Council of State, not because the Council of State sent its ruling on the issue of the removal. And secondly, also answering to the question of uh, Commissioner McCauley, the criminal type 
uh, Mr. Hoyos was reported on was appropriation, while in the process for uh, the removal was the undue allocation of uh, state resources. That is why the, they are the, diff the decisions are different, why different results were reached. But it's also very important to take into account that the Council of State took this into account. If you look closely at the ruling from August 2020, 2001, you will see that in at least four pages, the Council of State explained the difference between the process of removal and the criminal proceeding that uh, was uh, practiced for similar processes. And that's the end of our um, participation. Thank you. We will count off these minutes now we will give the floor to the petitioner i think it's 2.5 minutes please go ahead thank you very much madam president this uh, we would like to point out that as we can see on the arguments of the state in relation to the processes of removal for uh, congress persons this is all based on the legality and constitutionality of the proceeding and not on the conventionality of the proceeding. <clears throat> so def generating a defense considering domestic law cannot be admitted by the commission because right now we are looking at the jurisdictional acts of the Colombian state being in compliance with the American Convention for Human Rights. And with regards to that, I would like to point out that the state sanctioned a law in 2018 where the state revoked what was being implemented in an erroneous manner in the removal proceedings. So as to make uh, this uh, process compatible, this law uh, created the second instance. And it is clearly established that this law, 1881, was meant to bring about a compatibility between the American Convention and the proceeding for uh, the removal. Now, with regards to Article 23.3 of the American Convention, it is important to point out that the court, the Inter-American Court on the Petro ruling, the Colombia, pointed out that there should be a coexistence of the requirements to declare the restrictions on political rights. And there must be a competent judge, a conviction in a criminal proceeding. So, it doesn't make sense what the state is saying, because the Council of State might be the maximum authority, but it was not authorized by the American Convention to restrict the political rights. Thank you very much. Now we will give the floor to the state with the adjusted time. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, in reply to the arguments expressed by the petitioner, I will say that first of all, the state is not defending itself for, based on domestic law. That is why I said that on ruling C 146 2021, the Constitutional Court analyzed the proceeding of removal based on the decisions of the Inter American Court, taking into account the text of the Inter American Convention. In other words, based on a conventionality control. That is why these are our arguments. We are not just based on our domestic role, uh, law. Secondly, with regards to rule 1881 from 2018, yes, commissioners, with this law, the, the state modified Act 144-94, which established that the uh, removal proceeding had only one instance. After that law, the removal proceeding has two instances. And in that sense, there is a right to appeal. Now, if you review the 
reasonings, it is true that when that law was discussed at the Congress, one of the reasons for the modification was related to the American Convention on Human Rights and the pronouncements of the inter-American organs. But why was that? Because these pronouncements had taken place after the facts being analyzed today. So it is very important to consider the date in which the facts took place and the date in which this uh, ruling was issued. By 2018, there was case law from the Inter-American Court clarifying this issue of only one instance, especially in constitutional courts. That is only until 2018, the state made this modification so that its laws would comply with what had been established by the Inter-American Court and the interpretation of the Inter-American Courts. And finally, it is also important to take into account the requirements mentioned by the petitioner with regards to the ruling Petro v. Colombia, because on paragraph 97 of the ruling, the Inter-American Court is very clear in saying that Article 23.2 is clear because it, this instrument does not allow administrative organs to apply a sanction. After that, that paragraph says that it can only done, do this on jurisdictional acts. Now, on paragraph 98, the court states that literal interpretation is corroborated if we consider the objective. And on paragraph 99 of this ruling, the court says that they are trying to, uh, they're trying not to uh, have ruling parties or ruling persons to decide arbitrarily on the political rights of subjects. So it is possible for the Council of State to do this. Thank you. Thank you. I will now start with the participation of the Inter-American Court. I would like to ask my colleagues if they have any questions, please say who they are for. And after that, we will expect the answers. So we will start with Mr. Rualon. Do you have any questions? Yes, Madam President, I have a question to the state. My question is, is there any way for a person who has been punished with removal from office to participate once again in popular election processes, or is this a lifetime um, punishment? Commissioner Estuardo, good afternoon. In connection to your question, if the commission agrees, I will give a preliminary reply and we can complement more ideas in writing. In fact, the consequence of the removal from office makes reference to the fact that the person cannot occupy positions of popular election. This has been the object of a detailed analysis with a constitutional and conventional uh, perspective by the constitutional court in the sentence that I have mentioned before uh, from 2021. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. I will now ask second Vice President Margaret May Macaulay, do you have any questions? Um, yes, thank you. I have several actually. Um, and, and I'll try to be as short with them as possible. Um, um, my question is for the state. Uh, I would not trouble the witness or the petitioners. Um, the, to follow up on the first vice president's question, are you saying that the penalty of the Council of State is indefinite? Because it seems as if that is what you're saying to me, a common law lawyer. And is the law, is this permitted under the law of Colombia, even in the year 2000, that penalties can be for an indefinite period of time? 
rather than specific and fixed? That's one question. Can I ask all my questions and then? And rather they answer and that we be oh, as okay. brief as possible so that the other colleagues can question as well. As a preliminary question that we will complement by written is that it is a indefinite character. It is important to bring man the nature of the removal from office, as my colleague Hernandez pointed out. It was included in Constitution of 91 with the aim of making the Congress to act in an ethical manner according to the uh, ethical norms that all congressmen should respect. That's why it was established that a congressman should respect several rules and the consequence of having suffered from this removal from office has to do with not being able to participate or run for office. But do you this, have any other but, question? Yes, Madam, but this witness uh, was not a Congress person, it was a senator. Anyway, you would put some answers, full answers in, in writing. Um, the, what, what is it also part of the law of Colombia that when the Council of State decides to take a proceeding against a senator or some congressman or what have you, they do not specify what the allegation is? And they, in the course of the proceedings, they change the allegation and find not on the first allegation, but on the second. Is that part of the law of, of um, Colombia as well for this council of state to act on? Act on? No, lo es, como si. y precisamente, y por eso no se it's not. That's why I was saying that it's important to bear in mind that the process of removal from office starts with a complaint or a lawsuit that has to be specific about a fact and the accusation that leads to the removal from office. And based on that accusation, the process begins and the person subject to the proceeding, as for example, today, Mr. Luis Alfonso Hoyos, he is told the accusation against him so, can, so can, he can defend himself. That is how the council works. But it's important to point out regarding the allegation is that two additional allegations were dismissed because they had not been included in the initial lawsuit and they could violate the right to defense and due process. So that is done in order to prevent a, a situation that leads to your question. That's not how I understood the process here because he was he was found culpable for not obtaining not seeking and obtaining permission for his assistant to go abroad and work abroad and be paid abroad that was quite different from the initial allegation but again could you put that in writing for me please and um to what institution or body, in the course of your earlier um, um, statement, you spoke about um, the witness could have challenged the finding of the Council of State. To what institution could he have challenged that finding? And under what law would he have been able to do so? Specifically the law. If you cannot answer that now, that could be done in writing as well. Yes? 
Muy rápidamente le puedo responder que... I can answer quickly that although law 144 pointed out that the constitutional court in sentence C 244A of 2012 that indicated that although the instance was one, only one, where remedies the uh, accused can resort to both remedies that I have mentioned before had been exhausted by a Mr. Hoyos. And, and, and could you, I, I decide I don't quite follow. And, and is how did the criminal investigation by the Supreme Court arise? And what specifically was the allegation before this, the Supreme Court um, for them to spend three years in investigations, um, um, which they undertook? Muy bien. Eh, como, como lo señalé un poco en los alegatos, As pero... I have pointed out before, if you read the ruling by the Supreme, Supreme Court in the first paragraph, the court indicates that the criminal proceedings started because of a lawsuit filed by a citizen saying that Mr. Hoyos had committed a crime of appropriation. That is to say that this citizen declared that Mr. Hoyos had kept money that he had received. Well, this person that worked in his legislative unit was abroad. That was the accusation. Well. But that had been dealt with by the Council of State. I'm sorry, Commissioner. I understand the need and the importance of the question, but because we cannot have a bilateral dialogue, because we are running out of time. Can we, well, can we I will ask later on the in writing. commissioner to, could you mention all the questions so that the state That's my last can... question. I tried to do that earlier, but that's my last question. Okay, listo. Entonces, si el Estado termina la respuesta, okay. prefiero... Does the state want to answer or you rather reply in written we rather do it in written thank you okay. i will ask commissioner arosemena if she has any questions okay i will try to be brief it's in line with the last question by the commissioner it had been pointed out the same arguments that were presented before the council were presented for the criminal court and that the criminal court made an analysis of those elements, of those facts, those accusations. Yes. And that the person is declared innocent, non-guilty. And this decision, why punishment this death, this political death, why is this is not dismissed? Okay, Commissioner. First of all, these are two different institutions deciding, hearing the cases. The council that decides the removal from office and on the other hand, the Supreme Court but there's an important point that has to do that the removal from office has to do with the um, wrong allocation of public resources. The Supreme Court hears the same uh, allegation but focus on appropriation. That is why the uh, analysis made by the Supreme Court is different from that made by the Council. We want to be clear about this, so we will provide a written 
uh, response so that you can see how that difference is made, the criminal responsibility and the removal from office. And I would like to point out that this is an argument that the petitioner and Mr. Oyos mentioned in the uh, remedy that was filed and was analyzed by the 2008 Constitutional Court. And the this Constitutional Court it clearly explains the difference between both proceedings and one doesn't affect the other. So I will provide further information in written. Thank you. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Hernandez whether he has any questions. I have one question to the state. I could like you to please explain to us how the law removal from office proceeding would be today taking into account the law 181 of 2018 if his case had been heard now today i would like to understand what does the law 181 adds to this proceeding in order to clarify this reply we will provide further information in written first of all the proceeding will have two instances the first one before a chamber of the council of state which makes the decision in the first instance if the person considers it wants to appeal the ruling then that remedy is filed before the council that will then analyze this appeal this person then is allowed to present arguments if it considers so it can present evidence and the his arguments that's in general terms the way in which the proceeding is carried out but taking into account the jurisprudence recent jurisprudence of the council uh, state we will provide uh, further information in written commissioner do you have any other questions thank you i will ask commissioner clark whether she has any questions yes thank you very much my questions are for the state two questions uh, apart from criminal uh, criminal conviction or actions that constitute um, a criminal offense what other grounds exist to justify the loss of investiture that's my first question are there other grounds and secondly, if administrative irregularity is such an alternative ground, can one, can one reasonably argue that a lifetime ban in response to an administrative irregularity is disproportionate and therefore a violation of Article 23 of the American Convention? In connection with the question made by the commissioner, we would like to point out Article 183 of the Colombian Constitution. In that article, you will find in detail what are the reasons why a person is removed from office. Violation of the regime lack of assistance in the same period of sessions to plenaries, not taking office in eight years after the chamber begin their functioning, uh, wrongly allocation of public uh, funds and illegally illegal use of influences. That's Those are the reasons why a person may be removed from office. Commissioner Clark, do you have any other question? 
Yes, the second question. So if you have a situation of administrative irregularity, is a lifetime ban from elected office, can that reasonably be argued to be disproportionate and therefore a violation of Article 23 of the American Convention? Para respuesta a esta pregunta, in order to give an answer to that question in detail, we will answer in writing. We would like to point out the Constitutional Court ruling 646, in which the court analyzes, uh, taking into account the jurisprudence of the Inter-American Court, all this, uh, what the Commission is mentioning. So we will provide more details in writing. Thank you. Before concluding this hearing, I would like to thank the participation of the delegation of the illustrious state of the state, representatives of the victim. You have 30 days to present your observations in writing. There were many questions. I know that you cannot answer them all due to the limited time that we have. Once again, thank you for your participation. I adjourn this hearing. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you to the commission. We are in your hands. Thank you. To thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.